last two examples of divisibility as well as direct proof. So in this one, we're not using transitivity any longer. So we have three integers, a, b, c. We have a condition that a divides b and a divides c, right? So a divides b, not b divides c like last time. Then a divides the polynomial 10b minus 5c, right? So we have three variables. So let's let a, b, c be elements of the integers such that a divides b and a divides c. A, b, c, arbitrary but particular. We're going to use the definition of divisibility. So by definition of divisibility, that means that B is going to be equal to A times M, and C is going to be equal to A times M. Right? So remember, B contains a factor of A, C contains a factor of A. Right, because we're, we're um, relying on the fact that this condition is satisfied. Right? M and N are elements of the integers. Now we're going to try to show that 10B minus 5C contains a factor of N. And it's actually pretty easy. By substitution, we can say that 10B minus 5c is going to be equal to 10. And we're going to substitute for b, which is a m minus 5 times a n. And clearly it contains a factor of a. I don't think anybody doubts that. So all we're going to do is we're just going to say, show that 10b minus 5c is equal to a times another integer. So let's just go ahead and factor out the A. And that's going to be 10M minus 5N. Okay. And that's just by factoring. And we know that 10M minus 5N is an integer. So let's just call that K. All right, and we're done. So we're going to say that k is an element of the integers, and this is true by integer closure. OK, and we're done. So now what we can say is that by above, we have that 10 B minus 5C is equal to AK, which contains a factor of A. And hence is divisible by A by the definition of divisibility. Thus, we can say that A divides 10B minus 5C and for all A, B, C in the integers, if A divides B and A divides C, this means that A divides 10B minus 5 C. Great. So a little bit long winded on the wrap up. I could have done that a little bit more efficiently, but regardless, it gets what we need to do. All right. It says that it does contain the definition of divisibility. It has concluded that A divides 10 B minus 5 C. It justifies right here why we can why we can use the definition of divisibility. 
So it has all the elements necessary to show that um, the conjecture is correct. One last example for all A, B, and C, and we don't even need C in this example. So I'm gonna eliminate this C because there is no C. So for all A's and B's in the integers, if A divides B, then A cubed divides B to the fifth. Right. So um, first step, let's let A and B be elements of the integers such that A divides B. And just like every other proof we've done, we're gonna say such that A, B are arbitrary, but particular. All right. Now we use the definition of divisibility, okay? By definition of divisibility, um, B is going to be equal to A times P, where P is an element of the integers. All right. So remember, B contains a factor of A since A divides B. Now we're going to substitute, okay? We're going to substitute back into b to the fifth because we want to show that b to the fifth contains a factor of a cube, all right? So by substitution, b to the fifth is going to be equal to quantity a p to the fifth, all right? So all we're doing is we're just substituting back in. We can use our exponent rules. And we could say that this is a to the fifth, p to the fifth. And remember, we have to show that it contains a factor of a cubed, which it clearly does because it has a factor of a to the fifth. So what we can do is we can rewrite this and say that this is going to be a cubed times a square p to the fifth. Okay, so all we did was we just used the basic um, power rule or just the, um, the addition rule on their exponents where if you multiply like bases, you're adding the exponents. And so we just broke it up into a cube. Right? So again, that's an exponent rule. Right? And finally, we know that a square p to the fifth is an integer. So we can rewrite this as a cube times, let's just call it q, okay where q is an integer. And if we really wanted to, we could say that q is going to be equal to a square p to the fifth. And that's by integer closure. And we're done. We've shown that b to the fifth is equal to a cubed cubed. Right? So hence by above, we can say that b to the fifth is equal to a cubed q, which contains a factor of a q. And hence, a cubed divides b to the fifth by the definition of divisibility. Therefore, for all A and B in the integers, if A divides B, then A cubed divides B to the fifth. All right, and we're done. All right, so hopefully all these videos have given you an overview as to the correct process as well as the expectations for writing a direct proof, all right? Um, some key things to remember, okay? Make sure you show all your algebra steps. Define all variables. Okay. Justify all steps. All right. So um, just make sure that in a proof that it's self-contained. All right. So the whole idea to be able to do any proof 
is that it is self-contained. And self-contained basically means that um, there's no margin for argument. It means that everything that you need to know is directly inside of the proof. All right, so that's all for this chapter. And in the next chapter, we're gonna take everything a couple steps further.